good morning, everybody. I'm really happy that I be here, despite our silly, silly presentation title. Um, I'm Peter Mühleder. Um, my two colleagues, um, Dirk Goldhahn and Francisca Neta, aren't able to be here, so I try my best to represent re uh, us three and the work we're doing. Um, first, I wanna start with a short introduction of our institutional context, because I think when we talk about infrastructure, um, the institutional context is quite important. Um, I'm working at a thing that is called the Saxon Research Center and Network for Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage, which is both a network of um, non-university research institution. Um, and the non-university part is also quite important because that also means that we don't have access to or not always have access to like big university data centers or library infrastructures. Um, but um, the other part of our re research center is like a small DH lab, which consists of three permanent uh, full-time positions, which I'm incredibly lucky to be one of them. Um, and we are focusing on um, project development, research data management, and um, research software de development in um, this context of um, smaller humanities research institutions. Um, currently, we are mostly focused on uh, a project called DICUSA, um, Digital Cultural Data in Saxony. Um, the title makes a bit more sense in German, um, which is basically um, a state-funded joint uh, research project between the six uh, institutions of our network, where each institution um, is conducting one um, small scale research project. Um, and we, the DH lab, uh, provide the technical support or trying to build um, the uh, data infrastructure um, for this uh, research project. I won't read all the titles of the projects here. You can read them in our abstract or you can ask me later if you're interested. Um, generally speaking, um, we are dealing with um, data about people and their biographies, about artworks and their provenance, cultural monuments, um, places and landscapes. So generally, uh, speaking, we will build uh, social networks, we will map data, we will um, collect um, geographical information, build timelines, and I'm um, trying to represent um, transformation processes of people, objects, places in time. So for us um, at the DH lab, <laughs> um, our main goal is to build a support infrastructure to enable the researchers in this project um, to build um, robust, interoperable, and reusable um, historical data sets. So we are basically focused on structured data, biographic records, um, metadata information about cultural objects, and so on. So we are not dealing with like large amounts of text, digital editions, linguistic corpora, um, or any other fancy, interesting stuff which we hopefully come to at some point. Um, but we also have a secondary goal. Um, our institutions have quite a number of really interesting um, data in their um, hidden away in their <laughs> cellars. Um, and we're trying to um, sneakily um, make them more accessible with this project. Um, Examples for this data sets are, for example, uh, um, historical gazetteer of Saxony, which is really interesting um, resource for local places and their history, but it's right now it's only accessible as a website. Or the Bellum at Artis, uh, Bellum at Artis um, database, which is a quite interesting database about artists and artworks in the 17th century also not publicly accessible, only used for um, museum exhibitions at the moment. And also our partners at the uh, University Library in Dresden have a really interesting 
collections of digitalized and geo-referenced maps. Again, another resource we're trying to make a bit more accessible to improve the quality of it um, via our research. So what, how do we want to do this? Um, we're trying to build um, the fundamentals to enable, again, researchers in small projects um, to create um, better data sets. Um, right, I'm going to present like three basically pillars of um, our work, which is first, um, we create um, a shared data model um, for general entities, which are often used in um, our projects, such as persons, institutions, artifacts, and locations. And um, then um, we also develop two services and tools, um, which hopefully uh, enables this project and future projects um, to uh, work more efficient and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I'm don't want to get too much into detail about our shared data model. Um, we can um, discuss this maybe, maybe later. Um, but um, the main goal is here is also build the foundation um, for better um, interchangeable um, data sets. Um, we will map our um, data model with Cydox CRM. We will try to use um, RDF stars like an interchange uh, format um, to also include provenance information for all the um, statements and triples in the data sets. And um, we are also um, trying to build like common uh, scores vocabularies for um, often used um, domains such as um, maybe historical um, professions. Um, one of the services we built in our project is called Decotex. It's a um, modular reconciliation service, which basically is it's a REST API, which provides um, standardized access and mappings to authority data sets such as the GND of the German National Library, GeoNames Wikidata. Um, with this API, we also provide um, a standardized access to um, the property information of entities such as persons and places and organizations in this um, yeah, authority um, files which can be used for enrichment of um, metadata or um, entities in project databases. Um, and within this uh, reconciliation service, we also try to include more and more local resources, like the historical gazetteer of Saxony, so to make it also work as some kind of authority data. So you can link to entities within um, our local sex um, data sets as well. Um, this is an example um, how this um, reconciliation service looks implemented in a um, web application. You provide a search query such as a name and you get a list of results which are already clustered by their um, identifiers and you can then access um, the information within the authority files and maybe import them into your own uh, database. Um, the example, um, the web interface is also, excuse me, is also um, part of um, the next tool I want to present. It's called vData and it's a, uh, tiny flexible knowledge base for smaller DH projects. It's designed as a pretty lightweight web application um, in order to enable researchers to build this kind of structured data sets around persons, about objects, and so on. Our goal is to build something which is very easy to deploy, to configure, and to maintain. So we don't have the resources to build custom um, 
um, database application for each um, uh, for each research project. So, um, so we try to build something which can be uh, adapted quite easily without the need of uh, a lot of um, programming work. So it's heavily inspired by Wikidata, um, as you can see, but it also has some kind of um, neat features. Um, I will probably show a little bit. Um, yeah, it's completely multilingual, maybe not completely. Um, there was a quite interesting discussion here about multilingual DH, so we definitely have to think more about non-Latin scripts uh, in the future. Um, yeah, we provide um, links, identifiers, and like Wikidata, um, item statements and qualifier statements, which basically are the meat of the um, tool. But also um, the ability to um, add um, metadata, such as provenance information, comments, and confidence values. Um, we provide a full uh, history of edits for each uh, single data item, so it's easy to see what changed and you can track changes and undo changes. And yeah, we also provide uh, several options for adding um, provenance information to link to maybe other items in the database or to external URLs or also um, to Tero libraries. Okay, um, so I will skip the rest of it. It's quite cool. I was not brave enough to make a um, public uh, demonstration, um, but you can um, contact us um, to if you want to see more. Um, so just to wrap up, um, we are dealing the, uh, with quite a challenging environment. We have lots of small projects. Um, many databases, but also minimal resources in terms of hardware and people. And then we also have like lots of legacy projects, like projects from before our time, which are, have really cool data, but need to be made accessible and usable. Um, so our goal is to create like this kind of data-centric infrastructure that helps with this accessibility. Um, but we really have to pick our battles. Um, in the case of the cruiser, we're trying to focus on the fundamentals like a core ontology for data exchange, um, the reconciliation API and a flexible tool for data set, data set creation. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter.